I am so touched by the notion and so grateful that you as Mosaic member at the Mosaic membership have given me the confidence to deliver this Easter message to you today. So as I often do, I like to start with a story. On the first day in my drama one class in high school, our teacher, Ms. Durflinger, asked us to raise our hands if we considered ourselves actors. About half the class raised their hand. The girl in front of me was very dramatic in appearance and manner, and Miss D called on her to answer a simple question. Why do you want to act? I remember her name was Sue, and she stood up and turned to the class and said, I act to make other people happy. Wrong, said Miss D. The whole class fell completely silent. Then I tentatively raised my hand. Do you think you have the answer? She asked me with glaring eyes. And then I said slowly, still sitting in my seat, directing my voice to her, we act to please ourselves and to gain approval and to feel worthy to be alive. Correct, said Miss D. Not a sound came from the class for a few minutes as Miss D let us chew on that. Then she broke the silence and handed out the syllabus and spoke about her expectations for us. The students who chose this class because they thought they could get an easy A had worried looks on their faces. All the real drama students were smiling, except Sue. I share this with you because I wanted to make a point. We don't all know why we do what we do every day, but we can try our best to be honest with ourselves and be giving and kind and most of all, grateful. Sometimes it feels like there isn't much to be grateful for when you're down and out, but there's always something to be grateful for. My year has been a tough one so far the toughest one in my entire life. But good things have happened along the way. Every day I find myself thanking my mom, the universe, the goddess, and all the powers that be for my life and my family. So many things could have been so much worse. And I'm trying not, I'm, I'm trying not to justify the horrible situation that happened but I refuse to wallow in self-pity and sorrow and let it overtake me. I was speaking with a friend recently who has everything she could possibly need and was feeling wrong about feeling lost. I did my best to console her, but I understand her feelings. I have been overwhelmed with grief, with work, with caregiving and everything else in this quarantine time but it's also given me time to think, to cook, to clean, to gather back myself who felt so scattered to the wind. I can't say that I feel lost, but I can say I feel a loss, a huge hole in my heart. But I'm so grateful that we're not struggling right now. I'm so grateful that I can reach out and help someone else without worry. I'm so grateful that I know we're going to be okay and that tomorrow will come. To those who have lost someone recently for whatever reason, I have words of hope. Tomorrow will come. Take it one day at a time. Get through these 24 hours. Rest and do it again. Small steps can still get you where you want to go. I want to read a poem to you now. This is called, I Am Thankful For, by Nancy J. Carmody. The mess to clean up after a party, because it means I have been surrounded by friends. The taxes I pay, because it means that I'm employed. The clothes that fit me too snug, because it means I have enough to eat. My shadow who watches me work because it means that I'm out in the sunshine. 
the spot I find at the far end of the parking lot because it means I'm capable of walking. All the complaining I hear about the government because it means we have freedom of speech. That lady behind me in church who sings off key because it means that I can hear. The lawn that needs mowing, windows that need cleaning and gutters that need fixing because it means I have a home. My huge electric bill because it means that I am warm or cool when I need to be. Weariness and aching muscles at the end of the day because it means that I have been productive. The alarm that goes off in the early morning hours because it means that I am alive. I am grateful for Mosaic because I have grown so much as a person, experienced actual non-judgmental help, love, and friendship, even though I felt unworthy of it. You know what's funny about experiencing non-judgment for the first time, especially in a religious setting? It's like you have to pinch yourself afterwards because it doesn't feel quite real. It feels like you almost don't want to trust it because it's too good to be true. But then you begin to trust it and then you begin to give it. And then you look back on how you used to be so guarded and questioning inside. Now you are just open and trusting with a healthy dose of common sense, of course, but not worried so much. Releasing the worry and just giving because you can. Saying yes because you want to, not because you're pressured or worried about what others are going to think. It's a kind of freedom inside that allows other parts of you to relax and just be. I have grown so much being a part of Mosaic. I recognize my faults, but I don't dwell on them anymore. I just try to do my best and ask for help when needed. I am so grateful for the changes in my life. In closing, I would like to lead us in prayer. Make me an instrument of peace. Where there is hatred, let me bring love. Where there is offense, let me bring pardon. Where there is discord, let me bring union. Where there is error, let me bring truth. Where there is doubt, let me bring faith. Where there is despair, let me bring hope. Where there is darkness, let me bring light. Where there is sadness, let me bring joy. Let me not seek as much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in the giving that one receives, it is in self-forgetting that one finds, it is in pardoning that one is pardoned. It is in dying that one is raised to life. May you find gratitude and love surrounding you and your spirit for now and forever always. Blessed be.